Hey YouTube and friends on the forums, Wilm Racer here. In the last video in this build series, I showed a quick method to get a fiberglass fuselage without building a complicated multi-part mold. In this quick video, I'm going to cover finishing that fuselage out with internals and getting it ready to fly. Building the wings will be covered in another video. Starting with the hollow fuselage, I made foam templates for the formers and I adjusted them until I was happy with the fit. Since I used existing formers from plans to shape my fuselage plug, I was able to use those as a starting point for the formers. If you've created a custom plug, this is the point where you can sacrifice that plug and cut it up to make exact templates for your formers. Starting at the firewall, I mocked up the main structure that would handle most of the flight loads. This includes the motor mount, main gear mount, cabane mounts, and the likely location of the battery and electronics. Once I was happy with the foam mock-up, I cut the parts from aircraft grade plywood. Most of the plywood here is 1 8 inch, with quarter inch plywood used at the mount points for the cabanes and main gear. Two layers of quarter inch plywood were also used in the front of the motor box to strengthen the attachment area for the motor standoffs. Before attaching this portion of the fuselage, the landing gear was fabricated, mount points were added, and the cabanes were built and mounted. The cabanes are soldered music wire and will eventually be covered for a more scale appearance. Being careful to keep everything aligned, this box was attached to the fuselage using epoxy and thin strips of fiberglass to reinforce the seams. Some relief cuts had to be made in the fuselage, and these will be filled and sanded smooth later. At this point, the cutout for the lower wing was made. Again, wing construction will be covered in another video, but the installation of the wing in the fuselage was done slowly and with the help of an incidence meter. If you don't have an incidence meter, a few levels can be used. In this case, I need to ensure that the wing was installed at zero degrees incidence to the thrust line. This is a time-consuming point, but it is critical if you want to get the most performance out of the airframe. With the wing properly aligned, the wing retention plate was fabricated and carefully installed into the fuselage using epoxy and fiberglass strips. A sheet of wax paper separated the wing from the fuselage so I wouldn't accidentally glue the wing on permanently. Check, double check, and then double check again that all alignments are correct before securing the wing mounting. Any mistakes here will require serious surgery to correct. At this point I also fabricated a tailwheel mount. This one isn't entirely scale, but the mount is strong and I can fabricate a more scale tailwheel that will fit this mount if I choose to. A few additional internals were cut from 8th inch aircraft ply to add a bit of rigidity to the fuselage. Once I was happy with the strength of the fuselage, I moved on to the servo mount plate. This is relatively simple and the design will depend on your servo choice and the model size. I've opted to do pole pole for the tail surfaces and you can see how the pushrod guides were aligned with the servos and routed to the tail. The tail surfaces were made from foam core that was balsa sheeted and fiberglassed. Starting with the horizontal stabilizer, I attached alignment plates for the pushrod guides and installed a music wire and brass control horn that also functions as a joiner wire. Once the elevator was hooked up and I was happy with the travel, I carefully installed the entire unit, again using the incidence meter to make sure everything was true to zero degrees. Once the horizontal surfaces were done, I moved on to the vertical stabilizer and rudder. Both here are foam core, balsa sheeted, and fiberglassed. The vertical stabilizer had to be made hollow to allow the elevator mechanism to move freely, and for the sake of simplicity, the push rods for the rudder will exit the fuse in a traditional RC fashion. Once installed, a covering plate was fashioned out of 64 inch birch ply, attached with epoxy, and blended with body filler. After filling, sanding, and repeating several times, I was happy with the surface and primer was laid down. At this point, I moved on to cleaning up the wing saddle area. As the fairing is small, I laid a sheet of wax paper on the wing and built up the fairings with Bondo. The belly pan was added to the underside of the wing, and fiberglass tubes were added to allow access to the wing retention bolts. At this point, some cleanup was done to the forward portions of the cowling to improve the looks of the chin intake. The overall intake area is slightly larger than scale, but for cooling the electric power plant, I think it will work well. The last major thing to be addressed was battery access. A panel was added to the underside of the cowling that will allow easy access to secure 4 or 5S packs. This hatch is now magnetic, and a pin latch will also be used to ensure the hatch does not blow off during flight. That's as far as I'm going to cover in this video. I'm really happy with how the Pitts Challenger 3 is looking, and I hope to have the build wrapped up and flying within a month, so be on the lookout for more videos, including what I hope will be an uneventful maiden. If you've enjoyed this build and want to see more content like it, please like and subscribe. Thanks.